Can you tell your child not to talk to my son? I saw her talking to my son when I went to school to pick him up. Lower class people should only talk to lower class people, understood? I don't want my son to be staying in touch with someone from a poor family. Excuse me? What do you mean? Is it a bad thing for children to talk to each other? Isn't that their choice? Moreover, what the hell do you mean lower class? Of course it's bad. Why did your daughter talk to my son in the first place? You people do not deserve my son. Mrs. Johnson, why all of a sudden did we do something wrong? And what do you mean that we are poor? I believe we're living a standard level life. I heard you're a single mother. It's obvious you're poor. Where did your husband go? What? I think that is too much prejudice. You shouldn't say things like that. Just because I'm a single mother doesn't mean that we're living low standard life, does it? Even if someone was poor due to any reason, that shouldn't be something to be made fun of. You'll never know what it's like living a better life. Thanks to my husband, we're living a wonderful life. It's such a pity the way you work all day, and you still don't make enough to eat enough. Don't tell me your main meal is always oatmeal. We do eat oatmeal because it's healthy. Is there a problem? But it's not like that's the only thing we eat, obviously. I knew it. You look like someone who can only afford oatmeal. Just so you know, we had dinner at a French restaurant last night. I guess we're living on a way too different level. I see. Good for you. Well, there's no wonder why. My husband's the CEO of a company, did you know? That's how different our positions are. Or do you want me to ask him to hire you? Only if he'd accept a poor person, though. Thank you for your kindness. But if I may make a point, I believe it's the children's choice to choose who they become friends with. So I kindly ask you to not interfere with their friendship. Hello, did you hear anything I said? As a parent, you should understand this. Why would anyone want their child's life to be ruined by some poor family? After all the time spent raising them? First of all, you should rethink about considering all single mothers as poor. It's rude and inappropriate. Second of all, this whole attitude of being better than someone else based on income... It's ridiculous. Wait, are you trying to make your daughter a gold digger? Excuse me? I know you're trying to get close to my son using your daughter. But too bad. That's not happening. Give up. A daughter of a single mother won't even stand a chance. What are you talking about? There's still six. Why would she even come up with such a thought? Let alone me. Oh yeah? You never know. It seems tough to raise a child as a single parent. Plus, you wouldn't want your child to experience the same thing, would you? Of course not. I'm doing my best to raise her properly without a father. But to become a gold digger is not what I'm willing to educate my daughter about. Yeah, of course you'll say it like that. I guess I'll need to educate my son more. To not go near poor people. What are you thinking? I'm just a single parent, 
and that has nothing to do with the children. I don't mind what you say about me, but if you make my daughter feel bad, you'll pay for this. Sure, go ahead. Are you done? I need to get going, so I appreciate it if you can wrap it up. Oh yeah, I forgot you're a single parent. No wonder you're so busy. I can stay home all day and do the laundry and so. That sounds nice. Please keep it up. I bet you've never worked a day in your life. Shut it. So, did you get my message? Don't you dare think of letting your daughter come near my son. There will be consequences if you do. Please don't teach your child that. It's utterly ridiculous. Now, goodbye. Mr. Johnson, may I have a word with you, please? It's about your wife. Good afternoon, Miss Taylor. Did something happen? Yes. Your wife was looking down on me just because I'm a single parent. Pardon? It seems that she doesn't like the fact that our children are talking to each other. She saw them talking to each other at school, and she was ridiculing me for everything. Jesus. I'm so sorry about whatever she has told you. I don't know exactly why, but her values are sometimes really prejudiced. Mmm, okay. I'm a patient person, so I handle whatever she says to me. But I cannot be tolerant when it comes to involving my daughter. Can you tell your wife about this from your side? No problem. I'll try my best. However, since I have hardly ever interfered with my wife about our son's education, I may struggle a little when convincing her. Is it okay that I ask for a little time to figure it out? Sure, but don't take your sweet time, please. This is about my daughter, not me, so things will need to move ASAP. If I feel it necessary, I'll just talk to her directly. Oh, I will do my best. I can't imagine how she will react if I tell her how much I owe you. Since she likes to look down on people, I'm afraid our family would break apart when she finds out. As I said, I as well like to keep my tolerance as long as possible. But I need to take action before things get too late. It was really unexpected to hear criticism that bad from your wife. So please, understand that I have limits. Yes, I understand. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I didn't know how bad the situation was at this point. I'll do whatever it takes to convince her. Thank you. I just wanted to say that this is also for educating your son the correct things. Yes, I completely agree. Once again, I am really sorry. It's okay. Just please make it quick. Mrs. Johnson, you need to explain. I just had a phone call from school. The office told me that your son spilled my daughter's lunch. And made fun of her. Hi, Miss Taylor. I received a call as well. What are you so angry about? It's your fault. Didn't I tell you not to let your daughter come near my son? Your daughter just got what she deserved because her single parent won't educate her. You thought I would take that seriously? Are you insane? They're just kids. Exactly, they're kids. That's why it's important to educate them with the right knowledge. What did you tell your son? 
Did you tell him to bully my daughter? Of course not. I just taught him that your family is poor and he shouldn't be friends with the tailors. <laughs> it was just a slight warning about how dangerous it is being friends with poor people. Are you serious? What do you mean dangerous? I told you before. Since you feed your daughter cheap oatmeal and live a miserable life together. I told my son that being friends with such people will only make him miserable. You brat. She was crying. She came to me crying saying she was treated like a disease or something. Your son thinks poverty is some sort of disease and that's terrible. <laughs> Maybe he's right in a way. Excuse me? I mean, what's the deal? It was your daughter's lunch. I'm sure all of it wasn't worth anything. You can't afford anything good, can you? That's not the point. I feel you. It must be hard making ends meet. If you beg me to help, I can offer you some food though. Well, your husband's here. He's begging me to forgive you for what you did. Huh? He said he told you not to look down on people. Mr. Johnson even told me right now he'll divorce you. What do you say? Wait, what? I don't understand. He never told you, but I run a business. And your husband's company happens to be one of the companies we fund. I gave you the chance, but I guess you didn't need it. I'm ending the fund. Stop joking. <laughs> I know you're trying to play with me. You thought you can trick me like that? Too bad. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Why don't you go home? Your husband will be waiting for you. I've never seen him so disappointed. How? I don't believe you. How can you run a business? I thought you were just a single parent. Are you dense? Just because I'm a single parent doesn't mean I can't run a business. I'm doing whatever work I need to raise my daughter. I got divorced because my husband wouldn't work or take care of my daughter. Instead, he used my money to gamble and drink. Are you serious? You're lying, right? I'm telling you the truth. And that is why I'm canceling the contract I signed with your husband's company. Wait, even if that was true, why did nobody tell me? Your husband told me not to. Mostly because you tend to look down on people. And if you found out about this, Mr. Johnson thought you'll force him to do whatever it takes to bring me down. Well, maybe I would have said such thing. But it's not nice to keep it a secret. Would I care? Nothing's gonna change for me. Whether you knew the truth or not. But it's true that this all happened because we kept it a secret. See? It's all your fault. I would have changed my mind if I knew you were the business partner of my husband's company. Either way, I wouldn't like to have my daughter be friends with a family that changes attitude that way. Plus, your husband is planning to take his son with him after you two separate. Just so you know. What? What divorce? That can't happen. I wouldn't have a place to live. So? Didn't your husband warn you? That you shouldn't educate to choose friends by judging their backgrounds? And that you shouldn't barge into other families' business? Well, yeah. But I didn't know he was talking about this. 
Too bad. I hope you learned. So, any plans after divorce? I guess you'll be jobless, right? Wait, please. Please convince my husband. He should reconsider this. Besides, I'm not the one who bullied your daughter. It's not my fault. Well, who taught him those things? If he didn't interfere, this wouldn't have happened. You should apologize to the children first, not me. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry about what happened to your daughter. This won't happen again. So please, convince my husband about this. Yeah, yeah. You thought I'd forgive you? Too late. How is looking down on people? It's a surprise you're a parent of a child. Enjoy the lower life standard you were wishing for. After Mrs. Johnson came home in a hurry, her husband was waiting at the door with a furious face. Without standing a chance, Mrs. Johnson agreed on the divorce and got kicked out of the house. Although Karen went back to her parents' house to ask for help. Her parents did not let her in because Mr. Johnson explained everything. Without any support, she started a job and is working all day long. I hope she learned a valuable lesson. That she is no better than a regular person without help. Harry, I'm sorry. Would you mind just having a ready meal for dinner tonight? We have a few in the freezer. You can have whichever you want. Huh? You want me to heat something up for myself? I'm feeling really dizzy today. It would be really hard for me to cook like this. You already quit work, and now you're having me do things around the house, too? I'm sorry. It's not like I want to be sick. So, can you stop saying things like that? Sure, sure. What a surprise. You're using your sickness as an excuse again. Hey, come on. We were barely getting by with the both of us working. Now that you've quit your job, I'm suddenly supporting both of us. Do you even realize how tough this is for me? Try putting yourself in my shoes. Of course I feel bad about that, but aren't married couples supposed to support each other at times like this? In sickness and in health, remember? Besides, the reason we were barely scraping by, even back then, was because of all the money you wasted. Hey, all the money I spend is for work. Since you're just a woman, you might not understand, but men need to socialize and network to get ahead in the workplace. We're even judged by what we wear, so of course I'm going to need to buy clothes once in a while, too. Still, I don't think you have to spend as much as you do. Isn't everyone around you making the same salary anyway? The clients obviously aren't. You have no idea what you're talking about, so don't talk to me about my work. Besides, you're not even working, right? You're living on my salary. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. So could you stop nagging me? Also, if you want to cut your spending so bad, why don't you start with yourself? I've already been spending as little as possible, and it's not like I'm buying new clothes every month like you do. But you eat three times a day, don't you? Huh? Yes? Even though you don't work and basically sleep all day, you think someone like that should be eating so much? From now on, how about you just eat my leftovers? That way our food budget can be cut in half, too. Wait, are you being serious? You want us to save money, don't you? Besides, you don't even do anything all day. How hungry can you possibly get? I'm still alive. Of course I get hungry. Maybe I don't need to eat as much as when I was working out, but when I'm not feeling too bad, I still do all the housework. Whatever. Try living as a food disposal unit for a while. You might even like it. We'll definitely save money that way. If you want me to save money so bad, you should show me how it's done. I understand. But do you even realize how horrible you're being to me? 
I can't believe how suddenly you changed since I got sick and stopped working. Was I nothing but another source of income to you? Huh? This is your own fault. You're the one who was talking about saving money. You know whose fault it is that we have less money? This is all because of you getting sick, isn't it? I'm sorry. I get it already. It's all my fault. As long as you understand, it's fine. Just don't forget, it's my hard work keeping the lights on. So you have no right to complain to me. Harry, can I ask you for something? I have a hospital appointment tomorrow, so... Could you give me $100 when you get home? What? It costs $100? I don't think it'll be that expensive, but it's better to be on the safe side. Are you sure you're not just going to use the money to buy something for yourself on the way home? Of course not. I've always shown you all the receipts, haven't I? Of course I'm going to give you back any money that's left over. Ugh. And I didn't... Didn't I just give you some pocket money the other day? That was just for food, right? It's not enough to pay for the hospital, too. You know, are you even trying to save money? It seems like our money is just disappearing. So, just give me back my own debit card. If I use my own savings, you have no complaints, right? I'm not just giving you money while you keep living on my dime. Didn't we already decide I'd be in charge of all of our money? Don't complain now. Harry, seriously, what's up with you? I never asked you to manage my bank account. Aren't you practically robbing me? To be frank, I don't know how much longer I can live like this. I've been thinking of moving back to my parents' house so I can focus on getting better. What? What are you talking about? After all I've done for you, this is how you repay me? I'm thankful for you supporting me. But be honest. You don't like me being in the house all the time, do you? Ever since I got sick, you've been treating me worse and worse. I'm not begging you to pity me for my illness or anything, but I expected you to be a bit more considerate, at least. If I wasn't being considerate, I'd have kicked you to the curb a long time ago. Day after day, staying cooped up in the house with a miserable look on your face. I let you live there all this time, completely free. I've just been eating leftovers every day. And to save money, I don't even use the heating. All while you've been drinking and coming home late pretty much every single day. So what? I told you I have to drink with a lot of people for work. Plus my boss was replaced by some woman, so I'm more stressed than ever. She's been flooding me with work. You're flooded with work, yet you're still going drinking every day. If you have that much money to spare, we could be living so much more comfortably. Why should I have to save money for your sake? It's my own money I'm spending, right? Who are you to complain? I'm the one working. Yeah, I understand that. You really don't get it. Right, I've decided, as a punishment, you're not going to the hospital. Excuse me? We'll save money that way, right? It's not like you're going to get better if you go. You've been stuck at home for three months already, right? Why are we still wasting money on medicine? What are you talking about? Isn't that putting the card before the horse? If I want to get better, of course I have to keep getting treatment. But like I said, it's pointless. Wouldn't you rather just save on hospital bills? That way, you could even start eating more than just leftovers. <laughs> I really don't know what to do. Do you have any idea how insane you sound? I really don't know what to do with you either. Do you really think you can live without me? Your dad's already dead. And your mom's in the hospital, so your family home's empty, isn't it? And to top it off, you have your illness. Do you really think you can live alone? And despite all that, I'd still rather be alone than with you. I don't think I'll ever get better if I keep living like this. Anyway, just give me back my bank account. Shut up. I'm busy right now. This conversation is over. You can't just end the conversation. When I get home, I'm not giving you any money, you know? So hurry up and cancel your hospital appointment tomorrow. And don't waste any more of my money. 
Megan, where are you? And what were you thinking, leaving all the drawers in the house wide open like that? You left the house a total mess. Don't tell me you took your health insurance card without my permission. So what if I did? Don't play games with me. Who said you could go to the hospital? Come home right now. You're pretty demanding, aren't you? For someone who's never seen his wife again. My wife? Who is this? Is it not Megan? Your lovely wife, Megan, is sleeping at the hospital right now. This is your boss, Susan. Huh? Susan? You mean my manager? Yes, that's right. I'm using Megan's phone. Susan, thanks for everything at work. But could I ask why you're with my wife? Because there was some urgent matters I needed to discuss with you. So I went directly to your house. But it seems like you haven't been home since yesterday. And then, while I was talking to your wife, she collapsed. So, of course, I took her to the hospital. I'm so sorry for the trouble my wife caused you. But why did you need to see me on a weekend? Didn't I already say? There are some things I have to talk to you about. Well, at the very least, I guess I've learned how useless of a man you are. Would you mind coming into the office right now? Of course, I'll be right there. But I apologize if I smell of alcohol. I've been drinking a little. Is that all right? Your wife is having such a hard time. But you seem in pretty good spirits, don't you? My friend forced me to drink with him. I'm terribly sorry. If you're sober enough to talk, then it's fine. Also, please bring all of your wife's bank cards. Huh? Why do you want me to bring those? Because your wife asked for them. Didn't she tell you already how she wants to leave you? That's a little personal. I heard you don't even give her enough money to live. And not letting a sick person go to the hospital. <laughs> do you think that's acceptable? Do you understand how cruel your actions have been? Please excuse me, but I don't think my private life is really any of your concern. No, it really is. Huh? You've been embezzling company funds, haven't you? If you try to run away now, you'll be in even deeper water. Since you're currently under surveillance, I don't want to hear any excuses. So just come straight to the office with your wife's bank cards right now. Megan, when are you coming home? I'm begging you. Please come home soon. I promise I'll apologize for everything up until now. You've probably heard from Susan already, but I'm divorcing you. I don't want to divorce. I'm really sorry for taking you for granted up until now. I promise I'll become a better man from now on. You mean like the kind of man who steals from his company to go drinking? Or the kind of man who steals my sickness benefit checks? You're going to be a better man? Do you even believe your own words? I'm really sorry. Also, you were trying to take my savings from before we met too, weren't you? It seems like you got locked out for guessing my PIN number wrong too many times. I was really struggling for money. The truth is, I'm in a lot of debt. I know. I heard everything from your boss, Susan. It was all for another woman too, right? I'm totally speechless. You were really just using me for money after all. It's not like that. It wasn't until after we got married that I met that bartender. But I just thought she was a really good person, so I wanted to help her with money. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Even though you went as far as embezzlement to support her, your feelings must have been really strong. I really can't understand. Well, not that I want to anyway. I get it already. I'll never go to that bar again. By won't go, you actually mean can't go, right? But aren't you relieved? If you pay back the money embezzled, your company's not filing a police report, right? I'm still screwed. I can't stay at my office anymore, so they're demoting me and sending me off to a subsidiary. And I have to keep working till the debt's paid off. Wow, they're even giving you a place to work after everything you've done? What a nice company. How are they nice? They've cut my salary in half. 
And I still have debts I got into before the embezzlement. Things really couldn't be worse. And? What, do you expect me to feel sorry for you? Aren't these just the consequences of your own actions? Megan, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. Recently, I've been thinking about nothing but money, even though you've been so sick. You're realizing this now. I promise I'll treasure you from now on. I'll do everything I can to help you get better. So I'm begging you, let me make things up to you. I've realized I need someone like you by my side. Someone like me? Or like that girl from the bar? You know, the one you embezzled money for. I really don't think I can help you. That's not true! I just got so used to how perfect you are and started taking you for granted. But now I'm really a new person. You can be whoever you want, but do you mind keeping me out of it? You keep saying you want to fix things between us. But are you sure you don't just want to get to my monthly sickness benefits or my savings? You can't hide your intentions anymore. It's not like that. You've got to believe me. I promise I've changed. Without you by my side, I, I don't know what I'll do. I don't really care about what trash like you does. Huh? Making his sick wife eat his leftovers every day and even stopping her from going to the hospital. Do you think anyone would want to make things up with a guy like that? Have you already forgotten everything you did? Even when we were both working, you left all the housework for me. And still, as soon as I became sick, you turned on me. I really never want to see your face again. Megan, I'm really so sorry. I really regret everything. I'm sorry. Please save me. I really can't go on alone. I really don't care if you live or die. But please, at least sign the divorce papers first. Susan's bringing them to you next meeting, so don't forget to sign them. Don't abandon me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Aren't you the one who abandoned me first? And besides, if I took you back, I'd be wasting a lot of money, wouldn't I? Breaking up with you has been the biggest money saver of my life. I managed to divorce my husband thanks to the help of his boss, Susan. The divorce went pretty smoothly. Also, we didn't have a lot of share property to divide. But thanks to all the mental stress he put me under while I was sick, he ended up having to pay me some compensation. Ever since my husband was demoted, he's been spending his days working hard to pay off all his debts. And even though his company never pressed charges, he embezzled quite a large amount of money. So, of course, if he ever tries to run before it's paid off, the police will be informed. I also heard my in-laws cut ties with him after they heard about everything that happened. They were even worried about me becoming single while I was so ill and went as far as helping me move. So thanks to them, I'm back home now and recovering steadily. I can go visit my mother in the hospital more often too now. And best of all, I'm finally free from that husband of mine. I really feel like my sickness is finally making a turn for the better. I even get the occasional call from Harry's parents and his old boss, Susan. I'm truly grateful I've been able to meet so many wonderful people who genuinely care about me. For now, I'm going to keep focusing on getting better, in hopes of paying back their kindness as soon as I can.